in just seven days, I'm going to code the ultimate deep dark dimension because we all know exactly what this is. So here's the game plan. Since the warden is typically the head of a prison, I'm going to code an endless prison dimension, a labyrinth filled with epic loot, lost technology, and unimaginable horrors. But there's a catch. The key to lighting the portal is locked away in the prison itself. So how do you get there in the first place? Same way all the other mobs do. Death. Skulk Catalysts turn bodies into Skulk, but what happens to the soul? I say they're trapped in the Warden's Domain, a super maximum security prison under the Warden's lock and key. On death, players spawn in this nightmare dimension as Shades, forced to start from scratch in a hostile world with one goal escape. It's day one, and eventually, I want the player to light this portal so they can come and go as they please. And luckily, it was pretty easy getting this to work. Not only that, but I managed to create an entire new dimension. Now, this is looking pretty basic. This is what the overworld would look like if it were 100% deep dark. It's a decent start, but I think we can do better. So I went to some website to help me visualize terrain generation, and I'm gonna be real with you guys, I have no idea what any of this means. Pretty sure 80% of the file that I generated doesn't even do anything. Though, through trial and error, I made some pretty funky looking worlds. But the end result is a dimension similar to the nether, except there's no floor. It's just an open void beneath, perfect for an infinite dungeon. It's day two, and basically I need to force the game to do something it doesn't want to do. There's a ton of rules and limitations around structure size, but a year ago, I think I accidentally found a way to get around all of it. I tried making a million houses to beat some obscure world record and dab on a random British guy. It's a long story, it's not important, but basically I accidentally made this abomination. One single mega house that stretches in all directions forever. And I'm pretty sure, with some clever tweaks and the appropriate spacing, I can trick the game into making an endless mega dungeon. Now, I thought this was going to be a cakewalk. It was not. Because I loaded into a world and was like, What the hell? Instead of spawning my structures, these balls of rock were appearing instead. I wasted six hours before asking my friends Code Neon and Dr. Troc to help. Apparently, someone at Mojang decided now's the time to rename the structures folder to structure. Like what? I've been doing this since 1.16 and I've never seen Mojang do this. It physically hurts me to think about this, but my accomplishments for today boil down to me deleting a single character. That's embarrassing. It's day three, and yeah, I got my test structure working, but it's still pretty bland. Everything spawns in a grid, so we'll have to vary the tile size to basically trick the brain into forgetting that we're walking around a bunch of squares. I made a few narrow maze tiles to make the prison feel like this claustrophobic labyrinth. This is a dimension for players who want a true challenge, so it should feel confusing and overwhelming. I am designing this purposefully so that it's really easy to get lost. I'm copying and pasting elements from different builds, and while it's varied enough to be interesting, everything will look familiar all the time. Imagine the panic you'd feel once you realize you can't remember the way back to the portal. This is your life now. You will be here forever. I also made several cages where the warden keeps his unfortunate souls. This is a prison after all. I looked at the ancient city for more inspiration. I built a few more wall-like structures, but also various towers that'll dot the landscape to give the height some more variation. Finally, I built a few mega towers full of trial chamber spawners and treasure. The trial chambers really scratched my dungeon crawling itch. I just wish there was more stuff like this in Minecraft. Mojang put a ton of work into the new trial chamber spawners and vault blocks, and it shows. I personally think it would be cool to see them introduce even more structures that use them. In my opinion, dungeon crawling and combat should be the main focus of the deep dark dimension once Mojang gets around to adding it. Anyway, I saved everything in the structures and it turned out better than I could have ever dreamed of. After three cups of coffee and 10 hours of building, I made what I believe is the coolest thing I have ever built. I'm so proud of this, and yet we're not even close to being done. It's day four and it's time to add our first custom mob. This is the Warden's Domain, so whatever I code needs to add to the Warden's scariness. Looking around the ancient city, we see dark oak structures that look pretty familiar. I'm guessing that some unfortunate pillagers found this place and got promptly destroyed by the Warden, which means they would end up in a prison dimension as a shade. It's so sad seeing Minecraft's most elite killing force reduced to the sorry state, but also, it's super entertaining watching them get chased down. Making a custom mob is 
probably one of the hardest parts about Minecraft modding. It's just super time consuming, there's a lot of steps, and even though this mob is pretty simple, it's all I really had time for today. At this point, I took a little break to watch my friend's hardcore Minecraft video, and then I realized that I made a huge mistake with the fundamental premise of my mod. You have to die to get to this dimension the first time, which locks out a huge chunk of the player base from this experience. People were upset that the recovery compass was useless for hardcore players. Imagine how upset they would be if they couldn't experience a new Minecraft dimension. In my opinion, this is something that Mojang doesn't get enough credit for. When they release a Minecraft update, it's difficult keeping everyone happy. And in a lot of ways, Minecraft is like 10 games wrapped in one. You have the PvPers, the Redstoners, the Data Pack Creators, the SMPs, Super Flat Survivalists, the list goes on and on, and frankly, I have no idea how Mojang does it. Anyway, it sucks, but my goal is to code everything exactly like Mojang would. So now, rather than dying by a Skull Catalyst and being transported to this dimension, you can just find an item in a chest that you can use to light the Ancient City portal. It's not as exciting, but honestly, I think this is probably the direction that Mojang would take it. It's day five, and I'm going to code yet another custom mob, because despite having a giant pool of health and hitting like a truck, the Warden has one glaring weakness. It's blind. Mm -hmm. So we have the blaze, we have the breeze, and now we have the blink. A terrifying eyeball monstrosity that watches over the warden's prison dimension. And uh, I'll say it, I'm probably the Michelangelo of animation. Oh, this guy is such a tool bag. We got the idle animation where all the eyeballs rotate around the main eye. It's almost like they're being juggled by this magic vortex in the middle. It's just really satisfying to watch. Next, we got the running animation where the eyeball monster tilts forward and the main eye looks towards its target. And finally, we got the shriek animation. Okay, maybe this is a bit much. When it sees a player, the main eyeball will rip open, revealing a mouthful of spiky teeth and shriek, triggering all the skulk sensors in a 32 block radius and probably summoning 100 wardens in the process, making the blink extremely dangerous. But the Warden is still the star of the show. As I would soon find out, all of this was much easier said than done, because never before in the history of this channel did I run into so many problems. I crashed my game so many times, Mojang started bullying me in the logs. My search code to find the Skulk Sensors was so inefficient that it would literally freeze my game for multiple seconds. And after I spent an hour rewriting the entire thing to make the algorithm more efficient, I couldn't figure out how to programmatically trigger the skulk sensor. So then, after doing all that work, I was forced to throw it in the trash and pivot. So I made the blink 10 times larger, and I made it fly around like a drone. This would be easy, I thought. I've made flying mobs before, I thought. Except, the blink kept getting violently sucked into the walls and dying immediately. And these were just the tip of the iceberg. It literally took me six hours of troubleshooting to work out all of the problems I ran into. Today was miserable, if I'm being honest, but on the bright side, limitations drive creativity. In fact, there hasn't been a single video where I haven't had to make a drastic pivot. Yeah, I ran into a ton of problems and got really frustrated, but what I ended up with? An eyeball monster the size of a building that drops the mobs that die in the overworld into the prison dimension? Is pretty cool. I can't always figure out how to make everything exactly how I want, but more often than not, I'm usually happier with the final result because of it. It's day six and I need to make my custom mobs actually spawn. And remember when I said I was forcing the game to do something it doesn't want to do? Well, it started fighting back. The normal mob spawning logic completely broke down, basically making this new weather event. Anyway, while I stand in this catastrophe of my own making, I gotta get something off my chest that's been keeping me up at night. I made this series because I love Minecraft. It's the best sandbox ever made. I make these mods as a fun proof of concept for future Minecraft updates, not to dunk on the people who work hard on my all-time favorite game. And even though the Mojang is lazy sentiment has been around for a long time, before I even started my YouTube channel, I unintentionally exacerbated the problem, which I feel really bad about. Before YouTube, I worked as a software engineer for five years, and I can tell you, it's not easy. The coding is one thing, but it's a whole different ballgame when you're navigating through the red tape in a huge company with an established product. Would you guys be interested in a video about why Mojang isn't lazy? Let me know in the comments. Anyway, I fixed the problem, the spawning is working beautifully, and I'm really happy with how the mod is looking. 
It's the dawn of the final day, and I want to reward the player for visiting this nightmare dimension by letting them harness the power of the Warden in a vanilla-friendly way. You can capture Dragon's Breath and make Lingering Potions, and you can get the Wither to kill mobs to receive Wither Roses. Both of these are pretty mild. My initial thought was making a consumable item, kind of like a Wind Charge, that lets you use the Warden's Sonic Boom, but I wanted to challenge myself by coding a new redstone block. I call it the Subwoofer which you can craft by wrapping a note block in Echo Shards. The premise is simple. Give it redstone power, and it pushes the entities in front of it. The higher the redstone power, the further you go. It can range from being just enough to troll your friend in a parkour map by messing up their jump very slightly, or at its maximum, it can serve as an elytra launch station. If you wanted, you could even make a TNT cannon or maybe an arrow shotgun. If you're clever, you can use this to make a ton of different traps, ranging from simple to absolutely diabolical. This is a stasis chamber where you could trap your enemies, keeping them suspended in midair. Now, I'm like a toddler when it comes to redstone, so there's no way that I'm gonna make this for this video, but in theory, I think it could work. It could also serve as another means of item transport, even working vertically, or you could use it as human transport. This is pretty weird and janky, but you could do it if you wanted. Or maybe the subwoofer could be used to clear away the creepers in front of your base when you wake up. Maybe you're too lazy to make a minecart system for your farm. You could use the subwoofer, push one button, and immediately all of the bamboo or whatever you're harvesting will get pushed to one side and you can just collect it in a hopper. I had to learn a ton of new things to make this video, and in my opinion, the best place to learn a new skill is on Brilliant, today's video sponsor. Brilliant's courses make complex topics like coding fun and approachable. I wish I had Brilliant when I was first learning how to code because it would have made my life so much easier. There's courses in math, physics, data analysis, and so much more. So whether you're wanting to learn something completely new or sharpen an existing skill, Brilliant has a course for you. My favorite part about Brilliant is that it turns learning into a habit, giving you bite-sized lessons that you can do even if you only have a few minutes. I see learning new skills as an investment in yourself, and with Brilliant's hands-on learning approach, it's never been easier. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org whimsy or click the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Also, huge thank you to my Patreon supporters. Without you guys, these videos wouldn't be possible. I really appreciate your support.